Awo. Salam tana tena yistaling. Let's talk about drugs. Let's talk about RX prescription, over the counter, legal, illegal. But first of all, let's get to the root. Let's get to the real foundation and the meaning of these words, the meaning of these terminologies, and what's really behind the so called pharmaceuticals and this whole discussion that's in the media with the death of Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, and various other celebrities, stars, idols, show business people, so forth and so on. Let's get to the very root. Now what we teach is that, that etymology is crucial because there's two ways of looking at a word. You can look at it from its true meaning and in law, politics, government, in the what they call the mainframe of society, you know, where the real movers and shakers um, do business. This is why they hire lawyers. Liars, lawyers, you know, you can pick and choose and make fun if you will, but this is where the real power is. You understand? That's why the Bible even says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Scriptures teach us that all that we see, all that has been created, was created from that which is not seen. And therefore, the Word in spirit, force, and form is not seen. It is felt. It is heard. It is understood or it can be misunderstood. And there's a big misunderstanding concerning drugs, Rx, so-called prescription, which is to say prescription, and pharmaceuticals. We mainly want to focus on pharmaceuticals, but we're going to start off on drugs. Now, Many believe, be naive, and believe falsely that marijuana is a drug. Marijuana is not a drug. Marijuana is a plant. Its properties can be used as a, quote, drug, or it can be created, it can be modified, it can be um, processed, but it itself, marijuana, or kana bosom, according to the Hebraic, when we get into the Bible. Yes, marijuana is in the Bible. It is there. And it's a holy herb. It's a holy thing. And this is one reason why we as Rastafari, as the elect Rastafari, and particularly Line of Jews Society and our brothers and sisters, we do not advocate that everybody should just get high, you know, and if everybody got high, everything will get better. Yes, many um, rosters of the previous generation or generation believe that, and that was a part of a tactic, you understand, during that particular time in the movement. But we have grown as we should grow, and we must grow up. And we must grow up, first of all, by taking in accurate knowledge, accurate knowledge, not, not, not um, make-believe, not assumptions or whatever like that, but actually start to study in order to show ourselves approved to Jah show ourselves approved to the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's get into this marijuana thing first and foremostly. Marijuana, this right here is not a drug. This right here is a plant. You can see it is a plant. This is a leaf of the plant. This right here is the very same so-called plant. Now, there's this whole thing about legal, illegal. For Babylon, for the Anglo-Europeans and the American system, they regard it as 
illegal. But when did that happen? This particular document that we have right here, we had broke this down years ago, and many of you all probably already know these facts by now. But there are three facts that you should know. We're just going to summarize on the marijuana issue, and then we're going to move on and start to deal with this whole pharmaceuticals because they're trying to figure out, well, what caused the death of Whitney Houston? You understand? They had the big trial where another black man was um, lynched in the media, um, the doctor, Dr. Conroy, uh, Michael Jackson's doctor, so forth and so on, because of so-called um, pharmaceuticals. But the real villain is the pharmaceuticals and big pharma, the big farm, the funny farm. And we're going to break that down for you as we go forward. But three facts that you should know. First of all is that the anti-colonial awareness, and part of that is the Rastafari culture or the Rastafari movement, was linked directly to the use of herb, herb. And the White Houses in England and America presumptuously introduced the first Marijuana Tax Act of, guess when? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. 1937. 1937, claiming, they claim that the herb, this, this plant right here, you understand? Know this plant, this leaf, the leaf, this leaf that come from that plant, they said that it had an ill effect on man. Perhaps they should have maybe said it had an ill effect on white man, if they were being a little more honest, but they only regarded man as being white men. They didn't regard and still don't regard black men to be men. In fact, you can go to D.C. or you can look up on the Internet and look at the Constitution of the United States of America, and you will find that in that very same document is still there, is still on the books, that black men are three-fifths of a white man. There, therefore, we're still not classified as being according to their law. But remember, here's the good news. Their law is not Jah law. Their law is subordinate to Jah's law. No matter what they might try to tell you, no matter how they try to scare you, because the devil has a short time. Satan and his human accomplices, they have a short time. So they use all sort of tactics and all forms of persecutions and tortures to make you believe a lie. But the key is this. You must know the truth for yourself. Now, Secondly, the LaGuardia Report in 1939 and the Indian Hemp Commission in the 19th century proved that herb, marijuana, kana, bosom, had no ill effect upon man, mentally or physically. Thirdly, the abuse of marijuana. Where did this idea of marijuana and marijuana abuse originate. It's a, it's a modern phenomenon, people. The marijuana was known for thousands of years, and no sort of madness like the madness that we witness today has ever gone on in human history until this so-called Anglo-European white man rose up from the sea fulfilling Revelation prophecy. But the abuse of marijuana, or as we call it, Mary and John, the witnesses to his crucifixion at the place of the skull, as an intoxicant was due to the 1960s get high Woodstock generation. And guess what? These same Woodstock generation folk are now the very same ones who are attempting to illegalize its use 
from all those who need it most and those of us who have a religious, God-given right to the sacramental use, not abuse, but the use thereof. There's, so much, there's much more into this. We'll get into this a little bit later, but we want to begin off with marijuana because marijuana is often, when we talk about drugs, if they say somebody's on drugs, what's the first thing that you think? You think they're smoking, as they say, a little pot. They're smoking a little pot. They're on drugs. That's usually what most people think, you know? And if somebody says, well, I was smoking marijuana, nothing wrong with that, you'll get the people who've been programmed and made to believe the lie, who basically tell you all of this gibberish that's absolutely not true. There's a, there's a spiritual reason why they seek to keep marijuana suppressed and repressed. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, there's a spiritual reason to it. But instead, what they promote is their own synthetic and man-made drugs, which truly are drugs, according to the definition of drug. So let's deal with this first right here. Let's deal with this as this lecture right here as drugs, drugs, right, and far. Pharma. We'll call it pharma. Pharma. This is the root right here. And next to this, we'll put Rx. The Rx. And keep keep this in mind. This is a a medical symbol. It's a medical and a religious symbol. The Rx. It's a medical and a religious symbol. Um, medically, it means um, prescription. Really, recipe. It's a, it's, a, it's a particular recipe, like when to take it, so forth, and someone prescribed. It's written out. It's prescribed. It is written. When the doctor, write, the physician writes it, it is written. Well, our physician is the Jesus Christos. Our physician is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in his word, what do we find written? In his word, we find this written from the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and God, Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, blessed them, the man and the woman, Zakah We Nekebal, or Nekebal, or what you know as Adam and Eve, or rather, male and female. Bless them, and Elohim, Ha Elohim said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish or refill the earth, because this was after a catabol. This was after a catastrophic event. This genesis, this beginning, or this regenesis, this regeneration. That's why it says replenish. That means it was plenished before, now replenished. Like the earth right now is plenished, but it's about to get emptied out, and then there will be a replenishing, a refilling. So in the beginning, he said to them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, the, the birds, the, the flying things, the winged creatures of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, or that creepeth or moves, whether moves, walks, creeps, but that moves on land. And Ha Elohim, verse 29, said, and this is the key, Behold, look and see. And Nahu, Nahu, here it is. Look and see. Behold, I have given you every herb, every herb bearing seed, bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in 
the which is the fruit of a tree yielding, a tree yielding seed. So this tree, like the herb, marijuana, cannabosum, it grows. It's a plant, but it grows, and it can grow like a tree, and it bears fruit that has seed in order for it to continue to multiply and be fruitful. Now, here it says, to you it shall be for meat. In other words, to you it shall be for food. This is why when we as Rastafari and, and the Rastafari movement, we speak about ital, which is a total food or no to debtors. This is very biblical. This is very scriptural. It's very holistic. It's very environmentally friendly. And it is the way that the true God intended from the very beginning. So Babylon and the system of things is in violation, is actually breaking Jah's law. Therefore, it is illegal or it is acting illegal and contrary to the way of the great creator. But instead, they make us believe that we are violating their man-made laws while they say that it is God's providence that has given them all of this, and they say that the country was built up on this Judeo-Christian foundation. So are they hypocrites or not? You decide. We report. And then it goes on to say to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb, every green herb, not brown herb, not yellow herb, but every green herb for meat or migab to be ed edible, to be edible. And it was so. I have shown this book before, and I'll show it again because a good book, if y'all can get your hands on it, is called Judaism, Judaism and Vegetarianism by uh, Richard uh, Schwartz. Richard Schwartz, and Schwartz means black, right? One of was it? What is in his DNA? You understand what he has in his wallet. But Judaism and Vegetarianism, it's a very, very good book, especially for us as a Rastafari. Um, this is crucial. This will really help with your biblical studies in seeing now the fulfillment of the Rastafari, the vision of the King of Kings and his Christ in this millennial time. This is an excellent book. This is an excellent book, and we say a salam to, to those, um, those Rastafari kibbutzniks, you know, who have sought to live in, 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 in a community based on the inspiration of Rastafari way of life, you know, speaking to some of the, the Israelis and some of the other Jews out there who embrace more or less many of the tenets of Rastafari in spirit and in truth because they are also an example of the way of God, the universality of the way of God for all people. This is why I said Israel will be a light for all peoples. Now, with that verse there in Genesis, on so Genesis chapter 1, it is showing us that in the beginning, his intention was not that man would kill animals and, and eat debtors and eat the meat, the flesh of animals, or that animals would even kill each other and eat each other's flesh. No. All of those things happened after the fall. You understand? After the fall. The fall was a little bit different than what... Moses wrote in his first book, because what Moses wrote in his first book is parabolic. It is, it is a simile. It is a metaphor. It is a verbal hieroglyph. 
So for modern people who read the Bible and they see the Garden of Eden, not really comp comprehending the Ethiopic Code has lent to many interesting and some very strange interpretations of the book of Genesis and the fall of man. Simply put, the fall of man can be seen in modern black man. Yes, we can see the fall of man when we look at the black man, especially the black man in America, but the black man globally, but in particular, the lost sheep, and in particular, we Judahites, Afro-Americans, Afro-Caribbeans over here in the West. And then when we look at antiquity, we look at our ancient cultures from Babylon to Timbuktu to the very root in Ethiopia and Tobia and to the extension in ancient Egypt. And we look at that and we see the people are black and we recognize that these are afro African Afro-Shemitic peoples. These are black folks. Look what they did. But then look at where we are at and look at what we have gone through. That was quite a fall, wasn't it? So we can see the fall of the original man when we know who we are and we study our history. We study our past and of our related peoples, and then we see ourselves now at this, at this end of the Gentile world dominion and the end of the church age in this bridge period and transition period that we are in presently in 2012. But let's go forward. So that's just to get a basic foundation, first of all, and let's state this right here that Marijuana is not a drug. Yes, it's been classified as a drug by so-called um, Babylon system and modern, modern, um, modern civilizations which bow to white supremacy and the Gentiles, so they classify it as a drug, but then they also have classified we as being three-fifths of a man. They've classified we, so are they correct with that? No. Were they correct with we being three-fifths of a white man? No. In fact, the white man, more correctly, is probably three-fifths of us, maybe two-fifths. You understand? It depends on how ignorant and racist he is, perhaps even less than that. But marijuana is not a drug. But the question is, what is a drug? Can you define that? I mean, just, just right now, if I'm looking up, don't look it up just yet. Can you define for me, or even for yourself accurately, what a drug is? What's the definition of drug? See, this is to show how we've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. We hear people say, drug, this is a drug, that's a drug, that's an illegal drug, that's a, that's a legal drug. But what is a drug? What is the classification of a drug? You know, with the, you don't have to go to the law books. No, you don't really have to go to the law books first. Go to the dictionary first. Let us go to the dictionary. See, the dictionary has much more than just diction. Some have said, that the dictionary should be called the definitionary. I don't know if it was Malachi Z who said it um, first, but I think we heard he had said it, and that's true. That it's not a, We don't look at this for diction so much. We look at it for definitions. Now, in the Webster's Collegiate uh, Dictionary we have here, we have the etymological brackets. So let's go through the etymology of this first, the etymological um, meaning of this word, the root, the true word meaning of the word drug from open etymolo etymological bracket, M-E, Middle English, droge, D-R-O-G-G-E, derived from Old French, drogue, uh, or drogue, D-R-O, like drogue, 
D R O G U E, derived from is a question mark here. Low German, Druge, right? D R O O G E. Then in parentheses it says fat. Outside parentheses, comma, it says dry, and then it has in parentheses cask, like a, a cask. You know, like like if you get a something broken and they have to make a cask for you in in a, in the sense C A S K if I'm correct a cast like a mold a shape you know like a pill a keening you know the adjective it says now this is the key this is the key and and I have to be honest with you brothers and sisters my beloved ones you know I've looked up a lot of stuff here in the studies and you know personal studies and sharing sharing different teachings with the island but I didn't look up the word drug until I decided you know, let me be obedient to the Holy Spirit and, and teach on this, especially with all this talk about pharmaceuticals, so forth and so on, and, and this drug, that drug. There's these confusions. You know what I'm Because what is a drug? You know what I'm saying? Why are they going to call a plant like marijuana a drug? You know what I'm saying? Let's get to the definition. The definition here says that the ad adjective mistaken as the name of the contents. You get that? The adjective is mistaken as the name of the contents. See, the word drug, and, 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 and you have to bear with me on this, my people. You understand? Because like I said, this is fresh. This is fresh even with us, you know, looking up the word drug. We haven't looked up every single word, but many words we have looked up, you know, and we found interesting meanings in the word that has helped to really um, open the heavens, as it were, of the mind to recognize what the truth is that is hiding and there, right there in plain sight. But we pass by it because we think we know what it means. We think we know what that is. But then if someone were to ask us or we were to ask ourselves, define it. Define it. Define it without saying a drug is a, like a, a drug like such and such. No, that's not a definition. You understand? That's not a definite. Define what it is. Now, this definition here is saying that the drug really, right, from its, from its root, it says, see dry. See dry. In other words, C D R Y in caps. That means that the in the descent in, in English of this word drug, it's most related to the word dry. But now this this etymology here is telling us that the first one from so called low German, it means like fat that has been dried or some something that had been dried out and formed into a shape. This is why when you look at the so-called drugs, you understand that are properly or more properly called drugs, whether it's a Tylenol or even the simplest one, the beer aspirin or the aspirin, you understand, the aspirin rather. The aspirin, get this, when the white, European man, Anglo-European, came to America, he saw the Indians, the Native Americans, so-called Indians, some of the tribes, they would use certain type of, of leaves, you understand, when they got a headache or they felt, you know, they wasn't feeling well. They would take a certain kind of leaf, either they would chew it or, you know, dry it out and, and, and add something to it. In other words, the Indian, the Native Indian, the Native American Indian is the one that actually took the plant and processed it, you understand, into what we know today as a drug. You understand? In other words, would dry out the leaf, you understand, or add the leaf with other leaves or if there was a special type of medicine that was being created by the shaman for some particular purpose would take the raw materials, process them, boil them, burn them, grind them, or whatever, and then would form them almost like into a little cast or like a cake, you know, a little, you know, add flour to it, so forth and so on. 
so that it could, you know, be preserved so that he could have extra if somebody needed it in an emergency because some things to create, you needed to find all these different prescriptions. And so if it was something that was thought that the shaman needed, the, the doctor, the native physician needed, he would prepare these things already in advance. So he would have these things in case there was an emergency, so forth and so on, like they do, like they talk about now for, you know, um, you know, this kind of flu or that kind of flu, so forth and so on, you know, whether they have enough of these kind of drugs, so forth and so on. But the point here is that many people mistake the drug for the name of what is contained inside. You see, so this general idea of the drug is not a plant, it is not a, a, a tree or a leaf or something like marijuana, but the drug is when these plants and, 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 and leaves have been processed. You see, it has been processed and put into another form, you understand, for, for redistribution, in other words. So it comes from the plant world. So now what we have here is a connection with what we just read from the beginning, Genesis chapter 1 from verse 28, when the Almighty said to the first, the first male and female, not really Adam and Eve in that sense, they come a little bit later. But this first, this first couple or this first couple that represents the first civilization, if we were speaking in the Egyptian mysteries, we would liken them to Osar and Osect in that sense, this, this first male and female couple. But it's speaking for a greater group, like a king and a queen representing the first, we could say the first monarchy. You know, black man not come from monkey. Black man built, created, and maintained the first monarchies and the only true monarchy even to this day. That being so, the connotation of this now is that it says any substance used as a medicine. This is this is the connotation. This is this mean. This is how. Is, it is accepted. It may not be literally accurate to the roots, but is what is commonly accepted, whether right or wrong, this is how people know it. This is what the one, two, three, basically, and you can see as it descends in, 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 in the different, it depends on how many um, entries there are for a particular or how many, how many um, number, different, different, um, um, numbering there are, you can see how there's a connection, but, but it, 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 it starts to distance itself more and more from the root. Depends on how it was understood at a particular time by particular people. But here it says that any substance used as a medicine or as an ingredient in a medicine which kills or inactivates germs or affects any body function or organ. Wow, so on, on that level, we could basically, basically say food. We could, we could say food is like, a, isn't food a, a, a drug? Couldn't we not say that alcohol and, and maybe beer and even wine is a drug? In certain cultures, they use alcohol or wine or certain type of beers, they used it for healing purposes. They didn't use it to watch a football game or to, to sit around, you know, sit around the campfire just staring at the fire getting drunk or nothing like that. But they actually used these things specifically for maybe either a celebration or a certain sacred celebration or they used it for medicinal purposes. So see how different other cultures are, I mean, cultures that have lived totally holistic, you understand, with the environment, 
you know, with the creation, have not polluted it, did not pass on debt to us. You see what I'm saying? Now we live in this society which claims itself to be so wise and look at the situation. Now, that first definition right there is interesting. It says any substance first used as a medicine or as an ingredient in a medicine which kills, which kills, notice that, pay attention, which kills or inactivates germs or affects any body function or organ. Like I said, some foods basically do that, and this is why they have an um, a organization in America which oversees all these sort of things, and you know what its name is, right? You know what its name is. Its name is called the Food and Drug Administration. You understand? Or it's called the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, because food and drugs are very hard to distinguish. Depends, I guess, on the potency. I mean, you can have certain so-called concoctions, which are very, very powerful. You understand? But you got some food, spicy food. They might be able to consider one day spicy food as being a drug. It may sound ridiculous now, but, I mean, look how society has gotten more ridiculous. You understand? The more, the more history you study, the more ridiculous it seems to get. Anyway, that's the first one. Now, secondly, it has open bracket that says OBS, like obsolete, closed bracket. Any substance used in chemistry, dyeing, etc., used in chemistry or dyeing, like dyeing cloth, like if you're going to dye some cloth a certain color, that's a drug too. Now, anything you're going to dye, if you're going to dye a fabric purple, you're not going to generally drink that unless you do it with cough syrup or something like that. But the third one is, it says a narcotic, a narcotic hallucinogen, etc., especially one, especially one that is habit-forming. So now we have to get to the third, you understand, know so-called definition to come even anywhere close to what most folks would consider a drug or even what in some jurisdictions would be classified or scheduled as a drug. Then it has verb transitive drug, drugging, to put harmful drug in a food, drink, etc. It actually says that, to put a harmful drug in a food, drink, etc. Secondly, to administer a drug to, to administer a drug to. The third definition is interesting. The third one now under drug, drugging, it says to stupefy with or as with a drug. To stupefy, if you make somebody stupid, what do you do? You drug them. Now, this is what's interesting. For those of us who um, partake in the sacramental use of cannabosum, one thing that the cannabosum doesn't do, you know, it's really what you have the cannabosum do, but one thing that it doesn't do or is make you stupid or, or stupefy you. In fact, most people have, have noticed the opposite effects. But I, I want to say this for the record, and I might come back to this, but I want to put this down, and those of you who keep good notes, just put a note for it, and if you can dig into a little bit more, you'll find some interesting, um, some interesting facts. Um, white people, on average, could drink you under the table. I mean, alcohol, hard alcohol, I mean, they could drink, 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 drink. But black people, generally speaking, this is, this is, this is there's exception to the rule, but the exception justifies that there is a rule. Black people can smoke, say, herb, 
You understand? Much, much more so, to the same extent it seems, as white people or Europeans can drink alcohol. You understand? This is interesting. It's like there is some genetic difference, and therefore the reaction, since we live in a white, European, Eurocentric society, the legislation against cannabosum or the herb, marijuana, it is more coming from the Gentile or white mind, the white mentality. He's trying, in a sense, from his way of thinking, to protect his own. He, he doesn't give a damn about our sacramental rights or so forth and so on. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's us who have to, you understand, care to defend and get up and stand up for our own rights you understand, and keep these discussions and other activities to make sure that our rights are not violated. You know, our rights have been violated, and, and the stories on, on, on that still continue to this day. This is why I decided, let me first start a part, part one, the introduction, dovetailing the marijuana, dealing with marijuana, a drug. Is it a drug? Well, what is a drug? And clearly we can see that a drug is a dry, usually is a dry product, originally was a dry product because the plants or, or fat or different elements, whatever you, you, you're making a so-called concoction out of, even sometimes people would boil, you understand, boil different plants and other things and then have that dry out. You know what I'm saying? Or dry that out, or add flour or certain other substances to kind of, or put it in bread or something like that, and have the bread dry out. You understand? In order to have the effect of whatever this um, concoction or drug or this medicine, or even poison, because the word medicine and poison is very closely related even in the Ethiopic and the Afro-Shemitic um, um, related languages. So it says drug on the market is the last one right here. It says uh, a commodity, a commodity, this is the key, a commodity. See, the drug on the market, and it actually says drug on the market. This is the phrase, a phrase that pays for some people. A drug on the market is a commodity for which there is little or no demand because the supply is so plentiful. A commodity for which the, that's a drug on the market. I guess that's, that's some business Wall Street kind of phrase right there. Then they have in a separate, uh, separate entry, drug addict. It says, a habitual user of narcotics. Now, of course, you know where we should probably go next in this. We should just look at narcotics. Let's look at narcotics. You understand? In fact, we should have put that up there, drugs, narcotics, and big pharma. We probably should have called, called this lecture um, drugs, narcotics, and big pharma, but sometimes you don't know until you actually just, you know, you don't know what you'll find until you go searching for it. So narcotic, okay, narcotic. I have narcotic right here. Open at the etymological bracket, M-E, Middle English, narcotique, T-Y-K-E, um, derived old friend, French, um, or old Frank, Frankish, French, um, narcotique, you know, T-I-Q-U-E, it says originally, um, ad, originally adjective, de, I think, uh, derived from M-L, which is middle or medieval Latin, narco, uh, narcoticus, narcoticus, narcoticus or narcoticus, derived from the Greek, um, narcoon, narcoon, N-A-R-K-O-U-N, 
And that means to be numb, be numb, to be numb, to make something be numb. You understand? Almost like when you get frostbite, you know, to be numb, right? And um, etymological, it says uh, uh, derived from narke, narke, N-A-R-K-E with a, a, a long vowel phonetic sign over the E. It says numbness, numbness. So, so narcs, narc, narcotic is something that numbs you. You understand? Almost like a, um, what's it, antiseptic? Is it antiseptic or what do they call that? Um, um, analgesic? Like when you go in the, in, in the hospital and, and, and they numb you up. They don't give you a spliff. You know, they don't give you some so-called reefer. No, they basically give you, um, give you some of those pharmaceutical uh, narcotics. But it says stupor, right? Stupor. So we got this stupid idea, stupor idea that, that gets thrown in there. You understand? Um, but it's linked, it's linked with drug in that technical sense, i.e., Indo-European, NERC, NERC, N-E-R-K derived from the base of uh, snur, and snur means to twist, entwine, and then it has sneer, sneer and narrow. Sneer and narrow is the other key words to, to further look when one is um, seeking the root of um, narcotic, right? So basically a narcotic is something that numbs you. It's something that numbs you, like if you're in pain, and um, if you're in pain, I think you probably would, depending on how severe the pain is, you might take some codeine. You understand? Probably the, the codeine probably will be numb you. You understand? Even if you were to smoke a spliff or something like that, but, you know, but then if you drink alcohol, and this is where now mixing all of these so-called um, elements, many of them drugs, you know, and see, when we do this with the herb, the marijuana, besides the only other, you know, maybe in a limited sense, but properly, the herb should only be used with sabbatical wine, actually, as far as, you know, and maybe in a limited sense, you know, with a type of a tela sort of a beer, you understand, or maybe a hydro meal like edge, you understand, in a limited sense, or perhaps ouzo, you understand, but it should not be like many of us have done, you know, when we were ignorant, you know, be on the corner or be on the bench or somewhere, have some, some 40s or, you know, some other kind of, you know, alcohol, some strong alcohol, couple of blunts and, you know, we smoke and drink and smoke and drink and so forth and so on. But even that right there is quite mild compared to pharmaceuticals and alcohol. I mean, straight, I mean, alcohol itself. And, and remember, when we say alcohol, there's a difference between alcohol and wine. And see, I'm doing this to also point out to the the disciples, the brothers and sisters who are studying with us in this semester, you have to recognize these differences. See, a lot of people think alcohol, wine, beer, it's all the same thing. It's not. It's not. You understand? Know they're not the same thing. Yeah, they're in the same general category as drinks or so-called pseudo-intoxicating, thought to be in intoxicating, some more so at lower quantities than others. Others, you have to take greater quantities of it to even, as they say, feel anything, feel a buzz. You understand? But if you feel a buzz, that means you're not numb. You know what I'm saying? So th these, these categories and classifications of it are strictly foreign to our afro shemitic you understand, way of thinking and way of life. This is another reason why we must come out 
of this strange land. But firstly, we have to come out of this strange spiritual and intellectual land, you know, this way of thinking. You know, being born again, repenting, is all about changing one's mind or thinking differently in accordance with the truth of the word, of the scripture, you understand, of the testimony of our black Lord and Savior. That, that's where it begins, you understand, because if it doesn't begin in one's heart and one's mind, one's spirit, and one's soul, the, the body of itself, the flesh of itself can do nothing unless the will to do is there. And that will comes from our spirit. That will comes from our soul. Overstand, please overstand that. That's, that's the key. Something that we should just, you know, just get up and, and, and go someplace before we even have our heads and hearts, you understand, in alignment with his written word and the spirit of truth. That there would be foolish. And this is one reason why many have attempted to do that. And like they say, you can take the, you know, the nigger out of America, you understand, but you can't take America out of the nigger. So the, the nigger that come out of America, and he's still thinking, or she's still thinking as a nigger, and they haven't been born again, you know, in their spirit and in their soul, but throw on some African clothing or whatever like that, and then they go over there, they're not going to be a very happy camper. You understand? They're going to be very disappointed because they're going to be saying just like what the Israelites said. It was better for us when we were in Egypt. At least we had this. At least we could go to Mickey D's and, and, and Wendy's and, you know, the corner store. Now we have to do it for ourselves or, or, you know, <laughs> be that as it may. So we want to touch on, 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 on not, okay, basically, uh, one, a drug as opium. Notice the first thing that it says for narcotics in the dictionary, it says a drug. Now, that's a good thing we touched on drug first, right? So we do have an idea of what a drug is. A drug basically is, is some medicine or in some cases it could be poison. In fact, medicine, if it's taken wrong or taken in the wrong um, quantity or the denomination, as it were, it, or wrong prescription, it could turn deadly and it could be classified as a poison. You know? But basically a drug is that which is processed. You see, man makes drugs. See, it's man that makes drugs. Jah, God, he's the creator. He, he's created heaven and earth and the sea and all that is therein and created us in his image and after his likeness in the face of his beautiful son, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. You know, but man now comes along and he takes a little bit from over here, and God gives him some wisdom, you understand? But also he has free will, and he takes a little bit, and he experiments, and he, he does a little thing, and he says, hey, take this, my friend. You like that? Yeah, I got more of this. I can give it to you, so forth and so on. I mean, this is, this, this is the oldest thing in the book. It's like if you could bake a pie better than other people around you, and all of them love your pie, and it smells so good, they're going to come by, and you might start a little business off it. The pie, if one's not gluttons, there's no problem with them getting a pie even once a week, as it were. In some cases, maybe even twice a week is, is not that bad because even how you make the pie is not too, it's not too sweet. It's not too sweet in the sense that you don't have a lot of things that are going to rot out your teeth. It's, it's, it's a holistic but a good is something good, very, very holistic, as we would say, very ital. You understand? There ain't no problem with that. But now suppose even that good thing, if one does not take it in moderation, of course there will be ill effects. For food, we have gluttony. Gluttony is one of those sort of ill effects that are 
um, that, that, that's strictly, um, strictly frowned on and is something that we, we should not, you understand, be gluttons, but in moderation. And even with, even with the sacrament, we must, you know, even with the sacrament, because there's some immature ones that just think it's about, you know, smoking enough, 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 enough herb. Some of them smoke themselves out. You understand? So there needs to be moderation. So when we're speaking about sacramentally, we're not just speaking about getting some right. No, we're declaring our right. And we're praying that the heathen or the goyim, the Gentiles, have enough sense not to violate our rights and to respect our rights and to reason with us if they need to learn something from Josh's children. That's what we're supposed to be here for. All that other foolishness, our Father is not about that, you know, and we should not be about that as well, you know. This is one reason we have to separate the so-called Rasta, you understand, from Rastafari, from Rastafari. There is, there is a difference. Is, what is, is, does matters. Now, it says a drug as opium or any of its derivatives. What are the derivatives of opium? Morphine, heroin, codeine. Just mention codeine, right? Codeine, etc. Used to relieve pain and induce sleep. Narcotics are often addictive and in excessive doses can cause stupor, coma, or death. Secondly, anything that has a soothing, lulling, or dulling effect, adjective of like or capable of producing narcosis of, by, or for narcotic addicts. Now, we could have went to narcissists, but we're not going to deal with narcissists right now, but Put that down in your notes, narcissist, if you want to even go a little bit deeper in the root, this nerk, narc, that, 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 that root word right there. So we've touched on drugs, narcotics, you know what I'm saying, and we still must touch on the big pharma because this, this is the most interesting. In fact, they say with this investigation about Whitney Houston, you're going to hear them talking about Drugs. I mean, every day, you know, there's something about some, some prescription drugs, some pharmaceuticals, something going on with pharmaceuticals every After all, it's big business. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's the drug on, on the market. It's the drug on the street, so forth and so on. You see, the biggest danger with herb for them is that they can't really profit off it like they want to. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's such a holistic, self-sustaining plan, you know, um, that needs minimum, you know, love and care, and it produces. So Babylon thinks, and, and these people whose God is money, they think and wonder, well, how are we going to become rich off of that? If everyone could, oh, we have to have a law that says it's illegal. You understand? They started out with a stamp act thing. And, and all this is just bogus. All this is just they framing mischief by calling it law. This is all mischief. Now, for those who are the recreational type of marijuana potheads, you are wasting the sacrament, first of all. You know, you're really wasting the sacrament in that sort of sense, and, and we need to take a stance on that as well. But the first stance is, is the sacramental use of, of marijuana and, and where it is written, you understand, what it says concerning it, what do we mean by sacramental, you understand, what do we mean when we say we are Rastafari and this is our sacramental use of it. These things are all very simple and easy to document, you understand, and to evidence. This foolishness concerning marijuana and in particular denying Rastafari our rightful um, 
use and possession of it, cultivation of it, and um, sacramental use is all illegal according to John's law. You know what I'm saying? According to God's law, the very same Bible, you go in the courtroom saying, God, we trust. So they can't they can, they can fake the funk. They said they built their civilization on biblical common law principles. So don't deny it now to judge people. You understand? Know or suffer a devastating, a devastating and a mighty hand of judgment. Now, we're going to continue with the... Uh, the big farmer when we forward. So please, please stay tuned.